I have a friend. And I won't say any names, but she's the kind of friend who doesn't always talk. But when she does, you listen. You listen and you savor the words because you know that it is a treat that she's opened up to you, that she has released her words that fill your brain with images. You listen because she's already listened to you so much. You listen because she's telling you an answer. But in your mind, it sounds like more questions. You listen because she's talking about her mother. She's talking about her mama, a single mom with two girls who give up everything to support them. Her husband left her with nothing, but she has built a palace of words for her girls, a palace of poems, but they feel like a slap in the face when you read them, yet you understand that this woman has lost so much. But somehow she keeps giving. And I don't know this woman, but just hearing about her mama makes you want to love her. And when my friend tells me that after her parents divorced, her mama moved them around trying to find a paying job, a good home, and a nice daddy for her two little girls. My friend tells me that her mama has dated a lot of guys, not all of them good, but she was just doing it for her two little girls. My friend tells me that her mama once dated a guy she gave everything to. She convinced him to move to Asheville with her because she was convinced that he was the one. My friend shudders on this cold day as we walk past the football field. She remembers the night he beat her mama. She was only nine years old when she learned the weight of life. She was only nine years old when her mother's boyfriend came home smelling of vodka. She was only nine years old when her mother was hit time after time, tried to call the police, only to be knocked down again. She was only nine years old when she and her sister locked themselves in their room, holding each other and crying because there was nothing they could do for this woman who had done so much for them. And as we walked past the football field, I stopped walking because I didn't think that kind of thing happened anymore, especially not in Asheville, especially not to the mother of two nine-year-old girls. But later I couldn't get the story out of my mind. It was seared into my brain. I soon learned that one in three women are abused. One in three mothers, aunts, cousins, daughters, loved ones are hurt by people they thought loved them, by people they gave everything to, but they keep fighting. Though it hurts them, though it hurts them like nothing they've ever felt before, they will scar them for life. They keep fighting no matter what the cost. And if it weren't for these strong women who never gave up no matter how oppressed they were, then the world would never make any progress. And I remember when my friend told me I couldn't tell anyone. And I apologize for laying this on you now, but I know that by sharing this story, I am freeing her. By sharing this story, I am building her up. By sharing this story, I'm showing the world how strong women really are. Go, Martha.